Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. It's going to be new for me. <laughs> I'm used to. So if I do things wrong, forgive me. But let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come now at this particular moment, at this particular time, God, to let the words that will flow from my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, God, for you are my strength and my redeemer. God, I'm so grateful and thankful for every listening ear as well in this room, online, and those that may connect with this later. Lord, I pray that they have an ear to hear what you, the spirit of the almighty God, has to say to the church of Jesus Christ today. And God, we are so privileged, God, for the opportunity that we get to do this. God, every time we step into this building or connect through our social media or virtually, God, claim the victory over our lives, we thank you for being who you are in every place in our lives. And so, God, I ask that you would feed me on my feet, give me clarity, understanding of your words so that lives will be touched, challenged, and changed and never the same. And, God, today we are so grateful and thankful for your word this morning. Why? Because it's your word that makes us new, your word that teaches us about you. So make it clear and make it plain. In Jesus' name, would y'all just shout a big amen. Best praise we got right there. Amen. Amen. With a loud, thunderous voice today, y'all know what time it is. Let me see them what? Let me see them. Let me see them. All right. Checking it. I'm checking. All right. Go in and nudge your neighbor or look at them strange and say, there you go with your Bible, toting cell. Amen. You got your Bible with you today. We appreciate y'all. We have, I mean, when I tell y'all, I was sharing with someone this week that um, uh, even long last night I was in a leadership summit, and I always let them know that this is not my position in the church. Um, this is my function in the body of Christ. And so I'm grateful to function in this body right now. So once the ushers, if you need a Bible, let's go ahead and get them to you. If you need one, we'll give you a physical one. And would y'all go ahead and give our ushers, our urshers a great round of applause as they go ahead and take their seats today. Amen. We greatly, greatly appreciate each and every one of you all today. And I'm always privileged to be able to share and to see what God, we had some church this morning, boy. I mean, I, I think every time we come in here, God decides to wreck our lives. I told y'all that in the prayer, right? I said, Lord, wreck us. He did just that. Amen, Jesus. And I'm always glad that he always come through uh, even when we don't. He does it uh, even when we can't. And so I, I do want to continue to share with you all because I, I truly believe that my assignment during this season is to really keep our faith going. Because uh, faith allows us to see things that are unseen, but to act as if we see them. And so I believe that our actions today really tells us whether or not we even have faith for the future. And so what I've been doing, we done fasted a, lot, a couple weeks ago, and um, we done had some moments where we uh, really put faith to the test and put you in positions and places where I can see whether or not these things are working. Just that faithfulness of getting up in the morning and uh, maybe you all connecting tonight is another step of faith to say, God, I am always in position of increasing my understanding so I can walk in the purposes and promises of God. And so I want to talk about the faith challenge. Somebody shout the faith challenge. And so that's what we've been doing. We've been challenging our faith. I've been making sure that because life challenges us on our own, and so I truly believe that when we don't test our faith, God can't trust our faith. And so I want to make sure that every time we walk in this thing, that we understand how important it is to develop areas of faith. Now, I've taught this on Wednesday night, how our faith works. So faith is just not one dimensional, but it's multifaceted. Um, there are things that we add to our faith, the Bible says, to make our faith stronger. Um, we can't get more faith because God has dealt us the measure of faith. However, we can make what we have stronger every day 
by getting deeper or gaining a better understanding of the word of God, not just periodically, but on the regular. Somebody shout on the regular. See, this is important because what I've been adamant about and what I want to teach on this morning is not just faith challenge, but I want to talk from the subject of stable faith. Somebody shout stable faith. I'm not talking about a stable where you keep your horse still at, but I'm talking about a stable faith that allows you to stand firm even in the midst of things uncertain. And so as I talk about this, my focus over these last or these past months have been to keep our faith intact in and from failing and to stabilize our spirit during uncertainty. See, that's why I call this stable faith, because what happens a lot of times when situations occur in our life, it can shake our faith. I mean, the same faith you may have on Sunday morning may not be the same faith you exhibit it tomorrow or exhibits tomorrow or next week. But what happens is that even when your faith falter, there is a word from the Lord to stabilize you, to get you back on track so that you function in God's full capacity of faith for your life. That's the important because if you can't stable yourself out, anybody ever tried to do something and it got off balance and you couldn't stable it back out because you had to get it stable so you can function in it again and again and again. This is why I understood even about the word stable. It really represents this. It's not likely to change or to fail. So when I got stable faith, I have the type of faith that is not likely to change during the circumstance. It's not likely to fail. I want a type of faith that has possibilities, that has a likelihood of lasting through the most detrimental circumstances, through the most difficulties of life. I want to know I have that type of faith. Anybody want to know you got that type of faith? I mean, I know that you, because in this life you will have trials, but wouldn't you want to know in advance that you got a faith that's going to get you through it? I mean, you might not know how you're going to do it, but what you do know is that you're going to stand firm on the promises of God because your faith is stable. It has the likelihood of lasting no matter how difficult life becomes. Now, how do we continue in that? By staying grounded. Somebody shout grounded. Grounded or even rooted in the word of God, in God's word, and remain unshakable by life circumstances because during this time, we can become so focused on the things around us. And one of the things that really gets us uh, all, all off track right now is this disease that's out there. I know we got that going on. Um, but when I think about the disease, what also comes to mind is the dis-ease it causes. There is a disease out there that have made the body of Christ, even strong Christians, diseased. They're not comfortable anymore. They, I mean, they, 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 they got a butt behind their faith. I trust God, but. And so I'm trying to really encourage us every day that even during this disease that we're not diseased, that we're still holding true to the promises of God that this too will pass and our God will last. Like we know that regardless, but I've got to continue to put that word in us because we can know it one day, but when we face a trial the next, it can, disable, it can disable us and, and, and cause us to be shaken and not stable the way God wants us to be. Because as we move forward today, it is important and imperative to understand that we must recognize the world we live in. I need y'all to recognize that we live in this world, but we're not of it. We also need to understand the changes that we live with and the circumstances that we live through. Hear that one more time. We have to have this understanding that of the world we live in, the changes we live with, because things change every day. I mean, if you look at the news, it, I'm like, everybody, anybody got the truth? So you're like, back and forth, is this real? Is this real? You know, you got, you got, you got an epidemic and you got entanglement. Y'all know which one to deal with. Y'all, I mean, y'all don't know which one. You know. <laughs> Y'all like, <laughs> y'all mind all over the place. Some of y'all, I mean, it's like, what I do? <laughs> you don't know what to deal with. You're like, I got an epidemic going on. I got this entanglement over here. What do I, where, where, am I, where am I faith at? And you find yourself all deranged. 
Because we have to recognize the world we live in and the changes we live with, but also the circumstances that God has given us the ability to live through. Would you turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7? Because this is where I want to draw emphasis today. I'm going to try, try to draw fire, go higher, than retire. Matthew chapter 7. And so, <laughs> amen. Yeah, we're going to draw fire, go higher, retire. So y'all can get to y'all ready. I'm still going to get you there before uh, everybody else get out of church. Amen. Because some of y'all be looking like, man, I'm hungry, but I got here. Matthew chapter 7. Go down to verse 24. <laughs> verse 24 is what we're going to draw a reading from today. Understanding is what my goal is. Uh, is in this moment, verse 24, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. I thought it said it real good because I like one word in here that really makes sense um, to us. Uh, look what it says in verse 24. It reads pretty much the same way in every context or translation or version of your Bible. But look at here from the New Living Translation. It says, anyone who listens to my teachings, this is Jesus speaking, and follows it, is wise. Somebody shout, is wise. So anyone who listens to my teachings and follow it, follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. Oh, somebody shout, solid rock. It's because somebody, ain't anybody rock solid? Oh. I, I, that's why I told I like that verse. Amen. It's important to be rock solid. Amen, somebody. Any rock, rock, solid, rock solid folks make some noise. Make some, all right, all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because that's the difference between just being solid but being rock. And so like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. Look at this. Verse 25 says, though the rain comes, it torrents, and the flood water rise, and the winds beat against the house. It won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching, this is important, y'all, and does not obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come, not if, but when. And, and that's why I have to make this very clear because we thought that this came out of nowhere. But it was only a matter of time that something would come into our life. You, you couldn't name it, but you had something to really stand firm on before you ever could give it a name or a circumstance. But look what it says. When the rain and flood comes and the wind beats against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And that's why some people in this moment have really lost their faith because their house wasn't built properly before this pandemic. Because we have made a declaration here at Rock Face Center, and I pray that this is a word for the world, is that we have refused to collapse during a crisis. Look at your neighbor and say, I have refused to collapse during a crisis. See, you have to refuse to collapse, because this is what the word says, that when your house isn't built on solid rock, it will collapse. And so what happens in this moment as I stabilize us, even in this moment, because you can remodel your house today. You can get a renovation or a, a, a makeover even in this moment. I heard my wife say earlier that even in these last 20 minutes, you could have recommitted your life to Jesus right then and there, and you have just gave your life a spiritual makeover and now you can face the world like you have always been walking with Jesus because God has a way of rejuvenating us and restoring us even in this moment but we have already made a declaration to refuse to collapse during crises now I look at every word as what it is and as I look at this word collapse according to the text it means to fall down or end so a collapsing is, is that either it can go boom or it can go hmm. So it can fall down or it, is that a boom and hmm? Amen. It can fall down or it can fall in. It's a falling apart in various areas. So when a house collapses, it don't just fall down in one area. One thing gives way first. 
See, the enemy, when he brings in situations in our life, he may not just tear your whole house down and just move it out of the way. It will be a collapsing. In other words, there will be a frailty in your faith in, every, in other areas of your life. That's what happens a lot of times in this Christian walk where we find ourselves having less faith here and we think it may not affect us over here. But every level and every place of your life, that's why you have to look at the different parts of your life that Build your faith in various areas because the Bible lets us know that when we face trials of what? Many or various kinds. That means that we got to have the kind of faith that can face problems at every circumstance. See, some of us good at facing death, but we can't face it when we ain't got no money. It don't matter to some people when they ain't got no money. It, it, it matters most when you ain't got nobody next to you. I don't know what I'm saying. You good when somebody dies. You good when you ain't got no money, but don't let, you ain't got nobody in your bed. Okay. I'm just saying, like, every, <laughs> every area of your life, the enemy has ways, and I'm going to share this in a moment, of how it really brings about, because it's giving way, collapsing is giving way to what was once a notion, but is now a nuisance. Like, it was just a thought. I never thought that would happen to me. I never thought I'd face something like this. I never had an idea about this life would be this hard. Man, it should be over by now. And right now, the things that was once a notion has now become a nuisance in our life. And now it aggravates us in a way where it tugs at our faith on the regular, trying to give us to give in or give up. To turn in the towel and say, man, you might as well go back to what you were used to doing. Life seemed to be better over there. You still trusting God and this thing ain't over with yet. The enemy will play tricks on your mind to try to get you to relinquish so that he can start collapsing areas in your life. Why is this important? Because so many things come that can scare us. Somebody say, scare us. See, things come to scare us, to trouble us, and even confuse us. But before we lean on what we do or do not understand, we must listen. Somebody shall listen. Listen to what God said because it makes us wise when we want to worry. See, when we listen to God's word, it causes us to be wise when we want to worry. Bring verse 24 back up. It says, anyone who what? Listens to what? My teachings and not just listen, but follows it is what? Wise. See, when you are wise, you'll worry a little less. Because you know what the end is going to be. You got information before you see the incident. You got impartation before you had the predicament. You understand that whatever God had. See, somebody asked me earlier that, you know, when I thought about the guys going in the fire, the, the, the three Hebrew boys going in the fire furnace, they had a declaration that they made that says, when, if you throw me in this fire and I die, but if God doesn't save me, I still trust him. You got to have the type of faith that says, even if it don't turn out the way I thought it would, I'm still going to trust God. Why? Because I need to make sure that I'm listening to him. The wise person listens before they respond or react. I love this because it says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. See, there is a saying that's connected to this scripture that of a man whose, if his knowledge exceeds its works, or if a man whose knowledge uh, supersedes or exceeds its work is like a tree with many branches and very little roots. I got a lot on display, but got very little holding me down. I know you, we got people that can Google. See, this world allows you to Google everything, but know nothing. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? You can look. You ain't got to research no more. It's a trick of the enemy. See, he wants you to have big branches. He wants your mind to reach everywhere, but your feet to be nowhere. Because there's something that God can do that you can't Google. I promise you, if you ask Google, ask who's God. 
She'll tell you, hold on for a second, eh? that's out of my lane. <laughs> she said, you may want to talk, talk. Matter of fact, she'll probably tell you, go talk to your pastor about that one. Because what happened is that when I looked at this text, it shows us that the person got, that, like, got a whole lot of information. It's like a tree with a bunch of branches and very little roots. But what happened when the wind blows? We got more to catch the wind and less to sustain us during the wind. And so what happens, a man that understands that his works must match his information because the Bible says a man that reads or listens to my word but doesn't do it is a fool. So I can have a lot of information. We got so much information, but are we putting that information into practice so that when the storms of life come, that we'll have the solid, the rock solid, the stability that is needed to withstand the life storms. Amen, somebody. Because he knows a lot but never implies it is one who lacks wisdom. See, there's a difference between not having wisdom and lacking wisdom or the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom, according to 2 Corinthians, is that impartations of God that is given upon you regardless of what you've learned. That's the spirit of wisdom. But wisdom or wise in itself is the ability to apply what I know and make it practical in my life. Amen. Because look what happens. What happens when we know a lot but never apply it, we lack wisdom. Because wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Not just good, just, just good judgment, but also good work ethics. That means that I now got information, but I have good judgment and good work ethics to put it to work in my life so that it's not information in my head, but it's also actions in my movement. And so what happens is that I got a combination of really good display of what God is doing, but my roots are even deeper. Because what happened, I just didn't know what God said. I applied it to my life and I put my feet to the ground and I begin to walk by that faith which gives me stability in the midst of the storm why is this important because the word wise here in the text describes this one who foresees look what it says it's, look at this anyone who listens to my teaching and follow it is what wise the word wise depicted here represents one who foresees why because it's difficult to find stability once you've already been shaken stability should come before the situation note this it's difficult to build a hurricane and earthquake proof house in a hurricane or an earthquake. You think you could pour concrete in an earthquake? You think you could build a hurricane proof house while the wind blowing? See, the word wise here represent one who foresees. See, you live in those areas. I'm a Florida boy myself where we had hurricane. And so what happened is that we build our house hurricane proof before the hurricane comes. In California, the Californians, is that how you say it? Amen. You don't wait till the earthquake starts shaking. You build a hurricane proof house. You put them flexible beams in there prior to the, hurricane, the earthquake happening. Why? So when the ground begin to shake, you got stability before the situation. A lot of times we're trying to get ourselves right with God in the middle of our storms and we wonder why we don't see no results. Why God said you should have been wise listening to my teaching before you got in this situation and you would have dealt with this situation a whole lot differently. Oh, it's hard to build in the middle of the storm. Not that God can't do it, but why are we trying to put God to the test like that? God say, be wise and listen to what I got to say so you can build your house on a solid rock before you get into a shaky situation. See, before we get into a shaky situation, we already should have stability. That's why I've been teaching this for so long. I'm like, God, I got to teach faith. Why are you talking about faith? Because I'm trying to make us stable before we get shaken. Because it's coming. Something else is coming. Something else going to happen. Something else, amen. If you, I mean, you're going to be dead and gone. If you don't teach your children faith, they're going to have another situation that you should have talked to them about that they're going to have to face after you dead and gone. 
You ever think that my grandmama who passed and way right is gone ever would have thought that we'll be in a pandemic right now? But it didn't stop her from teaching faith way back then to prepare us for the come on somebody. Anybody ever had to pull back on your grandparents' faith and declare what I already heard is what I know right now in this situation. I already know too much about him to doubt him right now. See, that's the way this thing works, y'all, because a collapsing is consistent with unpreparedness. Things falling down, falling apart, caving in or breaking down is, pre is predicated on unpreparedness. It's because we lack that. And when I looked at this thing and even further, it said because you never know when your next storm will come. But look how verse 25, but can I just break this down just a little bit? It says, though, somebody shout, though the rain. It says, though the rain comes in torrents, that means consistently and powerfully. It said, though the rain comes in torrents and the flood water rise and the winds beat against the house, that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. Amen. Some of y'all worked in bedrock. We got a minister over there with the two to three year olds that are challenge your faith. I promise you, if you work with them. <laughs> You're like, boy, that, that's in the scripture. They, I mean, uh, but also that we get a chance to see them graduate out of bed. Like, I'm so glad they over in the four year old class. Riley came back today. <laughs> yeah, I saw Riley over there. She done took over Bear Rock over there, but she in there like I, 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 it's been a long time since I've been here. She's like Riley's back. Riley's back. <laughs> it's so great to see. I mean, but just listening to that, it made me understand something. According to verse twenty-five, it says, "When the when the flood waters rise, the wind beats against the house, and the rain comes, it won't collapse." Somebody shout, "It won't collapse." I see three things here that I want to iterate here in this moment. I see rain, somebody shout rain. I see wind, and I see flood. Because one attacks the roof, the other attacks the windows and doors, and the other one attacks, attacks the foundation. One comes from above, one comes from around you, and one comes from underneath you. So when we understand this, you'll see that that's why when you think about the word, because the enemy can come at you so many different ways. And if you're not properly prepared, you may think you're ready for the rain, but not ready for the flood. Oh, you may be ready for the flood. You got flood insurance, but you ain't got no, amen, somebody. You ain't got wind damage. <laughs> oh, my God. And so when I understood this, it makes us understand that the rain attacks your covering. Somebody shout, the rain attacks what covers you. See, one of the enemy tactics, I'm talking about this moment that we're in. That's why I'm teaching this stable faith. Because the enemy loves for, to come at your covering because he knows sooner or later we will get used to being wet. As soon as that covering is over us, and so that's why the first thing I told y'all during this pandemic is that don't get by yourself. Stay with the group. Stay under covering. Stay connected. Don't get out there and start wandering off because the enemy wants you to stay out there and get used to getting wet. He wants to take the roof off of your life or the covering over your life so that you will be exposed to the elements of a book. See, what happened is that you say, I ain't worried about the wind right now, but God says, what happened is that you'll find yourself getting filled with some stuff from the inside out and it, it end up collapsing your walls from the inside. I believe that when the covering of God is no longer upon us, God cover never removes itself. We have to choose to not adhere to his word because he said, when you hear my word or listen to my word and you don't walk in it or follow it, you are a fool. You're not the one who took what I said seriously. A lot of times we say, well, if I get into that situation, that's when I pray my way through. That's when I call the church. That's when I come to church. <laughs> we show up like God going to fix our problems on Sunday. 
And I just went through this week. Come on. I get it all the time. People call me and say, Pastor, my marriage breaks up. I said, what, what have you done over the last six months? I said, so you, you mean you ain't going to fix me today? I said, it's going to take me some weeks to, make, to talk to you. The first, week, the first day I'm going to ask you this, what happened and what you didn't do? <laughs> so I can rebuild some areas of your life. Because sometimes we take the lid off. See, anytime you take the lid off of your life, you end up removing your potential to progress. See, potential is nothing but cap capabilities. And so anytime the covering comes off of your life, you lack the potential of ever progressing. That's why the enemy says when the rain comes, make sure you keep your covering up because that's what's going to protect you and give you the potential to continue to move progressively towards God's promises for your life. Amen. Why is this important? Because the wind attacks your comforts. The wind attacks... Your comfort, I was in a class yesterday and somebody asked a question, who leaves their doors unlocked? Anybody? See, I grew up, well, I grew up in Florida, and uh, I'm a Florida boy all day, y'all know that. But my, my granddaddy, he lived out in this um, little city called Beesville. And in Beesville, uh, you can show up at my granddaddy's house and there'll be a stranger in there on the stove making him a plate of collard greens. And you just stand next to him like, I don't know you, but hey, I'm next. And he left his doors unlocked. It, it was very difficult when I, when I got married. My wife locked the door. I'm like, I'm bringing groceries in. <laughs> I'm right behind you. I'm like, how you going to shut the door and lock the top lock? Like, I'm, you see me? With... <laughs> am I right? Yes, yeah, me. Tell her amen. Say amen. Amen. I'm like, I'm like, come on. Like, a brother, right? Yes, I know you saw me with this, all this stuff. Somebody's going to jump in front of me and rob us before I bring it. So she's really big on her security. But in a house, your security measures may not be your roof because you can walk on, you can come up to your house and see shingles removed and you may not even think of nothing of it. But if your door open, see there's a different comfortability that happens. See, when the storms of life come in your life, it says like the wind. The wind has a way of knocking your doors down and your windows out. Because if you came into your house, a few shingles may not scare you, but a broken window will. I mean, some of your doors fly wide open. You're like, man, what's going on? And see, so what happens is that the wind attacks our comfort zones. It's your security and safety that the enemy says, man, you're no safe if you go out there. Everywhere you go, you're going to catch corona. So our safety measures, the winds come, and it takes us out of our security measures like God isn't going to protect us. And our faith begins to get a little shaky. Or maybe you've lost a job and you think you're not going to be able to pay your bill. That's the wind that comes to attack your comforts. To make you uncomfortable, make your faith shaky. And so those are areas of your life because the flood attacks your confidence. Somebody shout confidence. Why is this important, y'all? Because when you're not standing, you're sinking. See, I, I, I'm, did I tell y'all from Florida? And in Florida, we got quicksand. Anybody ever got hit with some quicksand? Y'all haven't, huh? Anybody. So, so I can't even tell you the story. I can't even tell you the story. Quicksand will sink you real quick. They say you got to remain still. You got to stabilize yourself. Because all other ground is sinking sand, but Christ the solid, what? Rock we stand. See, what happens in life is that your, 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 your foundation is your confidence. If you're not standing firm, you're sinking fast. And some of us have been in a situation where these moments, these things have taken place over the last months that have come and attacked the very foundations of our faith. I mean, I meet pastors, I meet Christians, I meet believers that in these moments they're second-guessing everything God has said. They're not using wisdom. I mean, people may say, Pastor, you're crazy for what you're doing. I say, no, I'm using wisdom every day because I look at his word and his, his word declares by his stripes. 
I mean, his word declares that he's my refuge. His word declares as I'm coming, as I'm going, that he's going to protect me. I mean, his word says that. And the Bible lets me know if I read his word and don't believe it, I'm a fool. So who's the fool? The one that does what God's word declares? Or the one who says that with everything I hear, I believe versus what I know is true? Because his word is true because the foundation of your faith decides the future of your faith. Where will your next faith season lead you? Or what will you be standing on the next time something happens? Because look what he says here in verse number 26. He says, but if anyone who hears my teachings and does not obey, is, it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. Man, it's already 12 o'clock, man. This, this, this mic must be doing something. When, when the, you just preach to this? All right. That's what I feel like doing right now. It is anointed. Yeah. But when the rain comes, and the flood comes, and the winds beat against the house. It will collapse. <laughs> What's... Anybody hear what I'm talking But if anyone hears, <laughs> Let me I'm a teacher, I'm a teacher, I'm a teacher. <laughs> Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, Jesus. Don't, don't start with me. Don't start with me. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. Maybe give me a second. Give me a second. Let me finish talking about this a little bit. <laughs> don't start that hard. Don't start that. I see why y'all like these things. It's anointed. Yes, it is. <laughs> but... <laughs> Lord Jesus, and lets us know that, man, the rain, the wind, and the floods comes to attack that covering, that comfort, and that confidence. Because I promise you, at some point in your life, during these last few months, you have felt some confident issues, some cover. I wonder if God is still here. Man, maybe he's attacking the areas of my life where I most was com I was comfortable where I was. But how many know that the comfort zone will never get you into the end zone? Oh, my God. I mean, God has a way of making this. See, as the devil is attacking and testing, God is testing and proving. See, every time you go through a moment where you feel lost and uncovered, you can always count on God to protect you. Anytime you feel like your comfort has been compromised and your level of security has, is no longer secure or stable, you can always count on God because he has a way of rebuilding those foundations in our life that will stabilize us in the most detrimental situations. And I truly believe that when I understood this, we have made a declaration to refuse to build our life on anything less than God's word and his righteousness. I believe that when we understand these things we'll live our life like it's golden because I want to let y'all know that faith is lived and not scripted somebody shout faith is lived and not scripted because what you can't predict you can still prepare for see life I know y'all like those reality shows and they tell y'all that this is real life but how many know that those things are scripted anyway they are scripted to cause chaos in your life this isn't reality TV which want you to think is real and it's really scripted to cause chaos in your life but this is real faith that I'm talking about people of God this morning that if you understand that in the midst of what you're going through you'll live faith you'll live in faith like it's real and not just some scripted out thing in your life I know we got the scriptures but this thing is not scripted I know we got the word of God but we trust him when we can't track trail or even trace him we got to believe that no matter how difficult life becomes that God will make sure that we'll come out of this thing without a scorch or even a singe of what we've been through I promise you by the time this thing is over by the time this
this thing is through, the people will look at us and say, what is it that you've been through? You can say, I've been through the storm, I've been through the rain, I've been through the fire, I've been through some pain, but God, in the midst of it, all oh, took care of me. He provided for me. He made a way out of no way. Anybody declare this morning that God made a way when there seemed to be no way? Oh, you ought to shout amen to that. Amen. This is a faith real show, not a life reality show. Because we got real issues, problems, but because solutions are only as solid as the substance of the faith that is in. Because we got to understand that we got a solution because we got faith that is solid in the midst of things that are shaken. Walk in that thing, y'all. Believe in that thing, y'all. And walk in stable faith. Somebody shout stable faith. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Let's get out of here.